Hey, what's going on guys? It's Jack. Back again to talk about the new Priest Covenant legendaries that have hit. And of course, you know, my timing is phenomenal. I started having a video, of course, the previous one yesterday, uh, which I won't dive in too much, won't do too many spoilers, but uh, in a lot of it, I spent a lot of time talking about some of the struggles and challenges that this is going to be facing uh, when it comes to Spirit Shell and just ramp gameplay in general from what we've seen from the fights. Today, we have those new Covenant Legendaries, so I want to start talking about how this can be, you know, positives and negatives of these different Legendaries so far, and what are some of the things that we can expect, okay? So starting off, we've got two Legendaries that are confirmed in the game. I can make them. You can make them anytime. You can hop on the PTR anytime you want and do it, all right? That is Buansamdi's Pact. This is each time you take damage from Shadow Word Death while your Fey Guardians are active. Your Fey Guardians' effectiveness is increased by 25%, okay? So, for example, you know, that 20% damage reduction, you know, 25% of 20 is 5, last I checked. So, your 20% damage reduction becomes 25%. You know, your 100% uh, cooldown reduction to whoever has your Benevolent Fairy becomes 125%. And of course, you know, your mana gains get buffed by 25% there. So, uh, in general, you know, by and large, like we talked about in the last video, and I, like I said, I recommend uh, check it out if you haven't already, link in the description below. Uh, I'd really recommend checking that out. But like we talked about in the last video, this can't really go Night Fae at all. It just won't work for them right now. Uh, on the other hand, Holy is very dedicated to the Flash Concentration Legendary. So, this Legendary is just a bit out of whack. Uh, the other side effect is that, like, Shadow or Death has a decently long cooldown for both Holy and Discipline. So, you know, you're getting one instantly, and then, like, in the last four-ish seconds of the duration of your Fey Guardians, you could buff it again. But it's not a heavy amount of mana that you're getting. It's not a crazy amount of damage reduction to be able to just change the game and uh, allow you to give up using another Legendary. And I don't think, as it stands at the moment, that it could be a good second Legendary for either healer, uh as well. And now for the real meat and potatoes, we got Shadow Word Manipulation. This is for the Venthyr. Uh, Mind Games gains one additional charge and its cast time is increased by 50%, okay? This is what I'm running right now as we're going through the Tazavesh, the Broker Dungeon. And this Legendary is super interesting, actually. You might just say, oh, okay, like whatever, you get an extra charge and everything like that. Uh, what's notable is that it actually does have that cast time increase, so I have like a 1.8 second cast time increase at around 30% haste, something like that. So it's going to be a bit longer of a wind-up to be able to work with as well. Uh, one of the most notable things when it comes to adding additional charges, uh, and it, a lot of people will rightfully point out that it doesn't give you just this extra ability all the time, you know, you just have like one charge and, you know, by that point, you know, if you keep on using everything on cooldown, you're only going to be having one at a time. But this doesn't really work that way at all, right? And in fact, in my previous video, I was talking about how there's a lot of 40-ish second fight timers. And you might even be very familiar with it if you've played something along the lines of Stone Legion Generals. Where not having mind games on hand or not having Spirit Shell on hand is just super annoying when you're trying to align fight mechanics. So now when you have this minute and a half CD to Spirit Shell, uh, you're looking at, oh, I have a minute and a half CD on Spirit Shell. I got a 45 second on Mind Games. I'll be able to bounce back and forth whenever I really want to, and great. But any other moment where you're going to have less than 45 seconds between damage means it's very difficult to be able to hit that Atonement type ramp. And if you're playing Evangelism and Rapture, same kind of story, you could... Yeah, put Evangelism and Rapture together and have one mega ramp. But then you have like a, you know, 40 seconds later when your Mind Games comes off CD, you try to put together a Mind Games ramp and you can't quite line it up. And then you're holding on to Mind Games forever. And then you're holding on to it forever so you can have it available for the Evangelism Rapture ramp. Or you split Evangelism and Rapture. And like I said before, yeah, you might be able to have the Rapture on hand 40 seconds for the damage, but then you won't have Mind Games. So you have like a kind of cruddy ramp where you get a bit of extra Atonement shielding or sorry, a bit of extra Rapture Shielding and a little Atonement Healing from a Schism and Penance cast, but not much else. So specifically for Disc in this new raid, I think Shadow Word Manipulation could be extremely good. And it's important to note that 
you are having to wait until Renown 46 until you can get it. So it looks like it's two weeks in. Uh, should be right around the time that the raid comes out. That you'll be able to make this legendary and have it upgraded and all set and ready to go. <clears throat> so a couple things to note. If you were going to run it with Spirit Shell, you lose out on Clarity of Mind, which we always talk about as being, you know, very essential. But it's now a minute and a half CD, and we're having one legendary to buff a minute and a half CD and only that, so we can net three or four additional atonements that'll actually get captured by the mind game's damage. Compared to being able to more consistently get a secondary ramp rolling in between Spirit Shell CD. Think about that. We talked about it with the Fate Scribe encounter where it had about 40 seconds between each damage burst where, you know, you'd have burst of mechanic, kind of like Artificer's Explosion, right? It debuffs a tank, tank runs out, boom, drop off damage. So what if you're in this situation and you get your Spirit Shell up for the first one and then you don't quite or you just barely get Mind Games back for the second one with this normal just one charge? Then a third one comes 40 seconds later and you definitely don't have it. With this, you're going to have it for the first, you're going to have it for the second, and then that first charge is going to be back well in hand by the time the third one comes out. Uh, now, of course, we start going into, okay, what if there's a fourth or fifth or something like that? It's not going to work forever. But from a lot of fights I've seen, they usually have these like, boom, boom, intermission, boom, boom, break, you know? That happens a lot of times. So if that holds up in encounters, I think that's just kind of a good feather in the cap. Other thing to keep in mind... Uh, which I'm sure everybody thought of the second that they saw this, is, hey, what happens if you use two mind games with one spirit shell ramp? Well, if there's enough damage going on, that could be really good, too. You know, the uh, Soul Render Dormazane encounter, for example, has lots of lots of damage every minute and a half to two and a half minutes, which means you could just pile everything you got into just one window in time, either with Evangelism Rapture, but you could also have a 10-second ramp window with spirit shell where you could just say, hey, break all those, break two chains out of four immediately. Boom, huge damage. And then I refresh my shields just like we do out of Sire Denathrius. You refresh it with another Mind Games hit, and then boom, you got your shields back up again. It's very exciting. It's something I'm super interested to see how it's going to actually work. Uh, we don't exactly know for sure just yet, but I wanted to kind of toss out a couple of those ideas because I think there's a lot of potential when it comes to Shadow Word manipulation. And... Uh, even though there are going to be some drawbacks, again, your Spirit Shell will be a little bit less strong uh, if you're, of course, not using both of your mind games with the Spirit Shell, which, again, fight dependent. Uh, there's definitely going to be the drawback of not getting out as many atonements, uh, especially if you're having to give away your power infusion, so you're not going to be able to have as much haste on hand to be able to build up a high quantity of uh, uh, shields and atonement onto everybody, so that's a drawback. Uh, but I do think that in terms of smoothing out and adjusting to a lot of these new damage patterns. Shadow Word Manipulation gives you a lot of flexibility that, frankly, Disc really needs. When it comes to Holy, super unfortunate that Mind Games just feels terrible for the spec, but what can you do? It's a bit of, bit of healing, bit of transfers, huzzah. Nothing to, like, nothing to really get you to give up Flash Concentration. Now, there's two unconfirmed legendaries that have been data mined, but not actually implemented into the game just yet for Priest. For the Necrolords, you've got Pallid Command. Casting Unholy Nova summons a Maldraxxi champion to aid you for X seconds. Each time an ally is healed by Unholy Transfusion, your Maldraxxi champion's healing and damage done is increased by up by 1%, up to a maximum of X, okay? Uh, something like this... I mean, is the Maldraxxi champion going to be converting into Atonement healing? Is it going to be working like a bit of a mind bender? Yeah, it'd be kind of neat. Uh, might be something to be able to experiment around with. But the second that I see that it doesn't, if it doesn't convert into any Atonement healing, I will immediately sort of like lose interest. So, Seers of Harmony for Kyrian. Boon of the Ascended's cooldowns reduced by two seconds up to 60 seconds for each stack of Boon of the Ascended consumed by Ascended Eruption. Okay. So, potentially, you just need to get 30 stacks of Boon of the Ascended uh, if you're having uh, by two seconds for each stack. So, you can pretty easily be able to get up to that if there's a lot of adds going on and be able to further lower your cooldown. Uh, a couple people have come into the stream uh, talking about the synergy that Spheres Harmony could have with Mechanicos, Forge Light Prime, Mechanicos, the third Soulbind for the Kyrian. 
where his capstone trait, where the capstone trait is the final trait in the Soulbind tree. Uh, that also can reduce the CD of Boon of the Ascended by another minute. A couple things to keep in mind. One, Spheres of Harmony is not going to reduce Boon of the Ascended by a very large amount when you're only on a single target boss fight. If you can't use your Ascended Nova to build up a lot of stacks, you're not going to get a lot of headway there. Usually you get, I think, three or four uh, Ascended Blasts out, which will give you, what, four or five stacks each. So you're getting maybe, what, 20 there, plus you got to be able to get a couple more from Ascended Novas. So that could happen. The other side of it is that the capstone trait unlocks at 57 renown, and usually you're getting like three a week. So you're going to need to go from, what, 40 to 57. And my math says it's going to take you about five or six weeks. So being able to use that at the beginning of progression, at the beginning of a tier, probably not going to be happening if they stick to that usual schedule, right? Unfortunately. Maybe we were able to do math that fast, though. <laughs> so... That being said, Spheres Harmony could be really, really good for a dungeon environment where you can easily hit a lot of targets. You know, both Spheres Harmony and Mechanicos' trait both synergize with just hitting a lot of enemies. So for Disc, that could be a huge boon, no pun intended, to be able to better sustain their output. And that could be really big, especially when they're not going to have Prideful's unlimited mana and everything going on. So something to consider there, something to kind of keep on the radar. But again, Pallid Command for Necro and Spheres Harmony for Kyrian are both unconfirmed as it stands at the moment. They might get implemented next week, uh, but if there's any changes, we'll let you guys know. Overall, I'm extremely excited to see how Shadow Orb Manipulation works out in raid testing. We're going to stream it this Thursday on my live stream, like in the description below, at 4 p.m. Eastern, which is going to be like 10 p.m. if you're Europe. So you guys want to stop by on Thursday and Friday and see how uh, mind games and the additional charge are going to be working for us with some of those raid tests. We got heroic bosses on Thursday, and then on Mythic, we've got the first two bosses that we're going to be fighting and testing. So we're going to try it out. We're going to get some more experience. Probably have another Spirit Shell update video and stuff on the way to kind of keep you guys up to date, as fresh as possible, to kind of keep an eye on what's happening for 9-1. Thank you for watching, guys. Hope you all enjoyed it. Hope you all found it useful. I'll catch you guys later with a lot more content with Tazavesh, Mythic Plus, and of course, more Spirit Shell. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Have a good one.